See Porter making a video at this early in the morning? What is this blasphemy? Well, what this blasphemy is, is you guys have been asking questions about my setup, so I guess I'll just, uh, just be, uh, showing you guys my full setup. I mean, um, I showed you guys a little bit of it back in January, but that was back when things were wildly different, so, yeah. So let's, uh, get into it. Starting off with, this is the Caliphone here, Caliphone 1030, um, classroom phonograph. It says that over here, but, you know, this obviously is not a phonograph, it's just a record player. Um, this is from, well, California, they, they weren't that great at uh, saying when this was around, but from forums and stuff, people have told me, and also uh, Doug has told me, that this was a thing back in the early 70s, like around 1973 or 74. So, yeah, I assume mine is from 1973. So anyways, it's just a three-speeder, a three-speeder, sorry, um, 78, 45, 33. Well, I only play 78s, of course. And so then there's the volume up here, the volume up here, the tone, and then mic volume, which the cool part about this is if you plug in a microphone, this thing can actually work as just the speaker. And then sometimes... If you got an instrumental piece, uh, you can just karaoke to it if you wanted to. Not that I do that or anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, the tone here, um, there's no way to really explain it, um, what it is. I mean, I don't think I could explain it, so I'm just going to give you guys an example of what it's like. Alright, let me just give you a sample from Ella Fitz and her orchestra. Baby, won't you please come home? From, I believe, 1942? I don't know. I'll look up the date later when I actually post this. All right. Exactly, so the tone, yeah, that's basically what it does. It's, um, it's, well, it's basically, um, just what you heard there. Um, the more I turn it up, the more hiss and crackle and pop I get from it, which I'm guessing it's like it's trying to, uh, do everything, trying to have everything in there, um, compared to having it muffled and none and just getting bass and stuff like that. And then some of you guys question on how I clean my records. Well, basically I'll do it like this. Um, this is one of the ways that I can actually show you right now. And it's just basically doing it with a needle cleaner, which is something that you can get for um, something you can get for um, for cleaning your needles. But these things will also work miracles on 78s as well. So what you do is just put them on like this and let them just uh, glide along here every now and then just brush off whatever you find. You probably can't see it from here but puffs of uh, dust is coming off it and the lighting doesn't pick that up. But anyways you just do that, I'll just do that for maybe 5 or 10 minutes per record. and. Then all the other stuff here that you see, all the other stuff here, I'll usually just uh, just clean off Oxford style, where you just get um, you put this under running water and you um, you just do it under running water and you have um, you rotate it under the water source, never getting it on the label, and then cleaning it off with paper towels actually done that for this yet so 
Um, I'll probably do that later. Now to show you everything else. So this is my first box of 78s. I don't know what they call it. What do they call it now? Um, milk, milk crate or whatever they call it. This is this uh, house is the first half of my collection, which was from late 2017 to um, to about mid 2018, where I got all of this stuff from. Then I have some 45s that um, I'll play on some other machines sometimes. So when I go to friends' houses, uh, yeah, I have a 45 friends and stuff. Um, yeah, this is actually an ammo crate. Yeah, so I figure that if you're collecting, uh, if you're collecting 45s, you might as well do it in some style. Then just another regular, uh, just another regular crate, Geiger counter, and then my box of 33s over here, which I have some 78 albums in. And then this is just my bare bones attempt at, uh, at organization over in this actual wooden milk crate. I have ink spots plus related, you know, all the all the bands that tie into the ink spots lore. And I have different ARC labels from the 20s and 30s. And then I have rock and roll back here. But the rock and roll probably ends about here or so. Not all of that's rock and roll. Then everything like past here is just misc. Then this here is just uh, the lid to my telephone. And it's, it's uh, great for storing records when I'm just like, when I'm like working on a project or something or writing a script, I'll just, um, I'll just put a bunch of these in here and then um, turn them out every time I'm, I'm playing a record or so. And this is what I'm storing in there. But it's basically just instructions on how to, uh, on how to set this thing up and how to uh, do stuff with, uh, with switching out needles. Speaking of which, I have two that I swap out every now and then. These things, like, I mean, you need to only replace one every six or so months. If you don't believe me, then just check it out then on, um, go to one of my videos from January when I first got this thing and compare it to now. Yeah. And this here is just my bed where you see this at the end of every video of mine uh, where I just show off the record and the A side is here, the B side is here. You can listen to that here on screen or in the description below. All that BS. Anyways, um, I'll see you guys around.